A standoff in Lemon Grove this morning, ending with the suspect in cuffs after a break in in broad daylight. A tense situation brewing in Iraq after protesters tried to break into the U.S. Embassy. Who American officials say is behind the unrest? And final preparations underway right now. What to expect at this year's San Diego International Auto Show. 10 News Midday starts now. 10 News begins with breaking news. Yeah, we start with this breaking news in Lemon Grove. A man arrested after he broke into a home there. I'm Virginia Chong. And I'm Derek Stalin for Jim Patton. Police surrounded the home before coaxing the suspect out. 10 News reporter Rachel Bianco is at the scene for us. And Rachel, the Sheriff's Department has a history, they say, with this suspect. Yeah, that's right. Certainly a frightening and a bizarre morning for the people who live here and deputies say they do have a history with the intruder. They have been to this neighborhood before because of issues with him and he actually lives right across the street from the house that he is accused of breaking into. Now this is Colfax Drive. The break in happened uh, just before nine o'clock this morning. A family with children was sleeping in the back house when they heard pounding on the front door of the unit that's in the front. This is a duplex. When deputies got here, the guy was inside and would not come out. They surrounded the home and brought in a police dog and a helicopter. About an hour went by. He may have gotten in by breaking a window. It's unclear what he was doing in there, but deputies, deputies say he may have turned on the stove. They made several attempts to try to get him out, and when he refused, they finally sent in the police dog. He was bitten in the leg and then taken away by ambulance. He's facing vandalism and burglary charges. No one else was hurt. Deputies are not releasing his name right now. We're working to gather more information and more on the uh, history of problems uh, that we're learning regarding this resident, but certainly a scary morning for the people who live in this house. Reporting live in Lemon Grove, Rachel Bianco, 10 News. Rachel, thanks for that report. Violent scenes in Iraq overnight. Crowds of protesters attacking the U.S. Embassy there. The State Department says the staffers are safe, but the fallout continues this morning. Yeah, ABC's Julia McFarlane tells us the U.S. is now placing the blame for this attack on Iran. Scenes reminiscent of the early days of the Gulf War. Scores of angry protesters outside the American embassy in Baghdad. Smoke rising from embassy gates, glass smashed, a security checkpoint set on fire. Officials telling ABC News the embassy is preparing for an evacuation if needed, adding the U.S. ambassador to Iraq is not there. He is on leave for the holidays. Fresh from funeral marches in the capital, they are angry about U.S. airstrikes over the weekend that reportedly killed 25 militia members. Just a pane of glass separating American guards from hostile crowds. President Trump this morning describing the attack as being orchestrated by Iran, tweeting, we expect Iraq to use its forces to protect the embassy, and so notified. These are members of Kataib Hezbollah, an Iranian-backed Iraqi militia, a U.S.-designated terror organization. The group was targeted by the American airstrikes. It was a muscular response from the Trump administration after a rocket attack in northern Iraq killed a U.S. civilian contractor last week. The Iranian-backed militia were blamed for the attack. Outside the embassy, a markedly different response from Iraqi security forces compared to earlier this year, where police met anti-government protesters with a heavy-handed response. Meanwhile, amid concern the Iraqi security forces failed to protect this highly sensitive compound, the Iraqi leadership assured Secretary of State Mike Pompeo that they took their responsibility seriously and would guarantee the safety and security of American personnel and property. Julia McFarlane, ABC News. Here locally, police in National City are investigating an early morning shooting that sent two people to a hospital. Officers were called to a Shell Station parking lot on National City Boulevard just before 3 this morning. Police say a man and a woman stumbled into the parking lot saying they had been shot in the legs. The victims were taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries, but they weren't cooperating with investigators. Officers were looking into a stolen car that was left near the pumps, but it's not clear if, at this point if it's related to the shooting. We have a follow up to a story we first told you about two weeks ago. So a Linda Vista mom's car was stolen with her children's Christmas presents inside. Now, after our story aired, 10 news viewers stepped in with presents for the family. Well, now a towing company is jumping in to help the family after they hit another rough patch. 10 news reporter Marie Cornell is live in Linda Vista. Marie, can you explain what's happened now? 
So Virginia, they have the car back, but if you take a closer look inside, it's not in the condition she hoped it would be in. Undrivable. That's the condition Brenda Gamino's car is in after it was found ditched in El Cajon just a day after someone stole it from her Linda Vista house. At the time, she was upset about her children's Christmas presents, which were still in the car when it was taken. But now she's got more problems. A missing steering wheel, a car that won't start, and the inside trashed. Everything that was in the, the glove compartment is gone. Like, there's nothing in there. Nothing. After 10 News introduced you to Brenda and her family, many viewers stepped in to help bringing presents to make the holidays a little brighter. But that help didn't end there. You see, Brenda's car has been at Western Towing for days, and she didn't even know it, racking up a bill of $1,300, money she didn't have. And after hearing about Brenda's story, the towing company waived the fees. It doesn't happen too often, but when it does, we try to accommodate the owner because it's just unfortunate. That Giving Brenda something to smile about. As she prepares to tackle her next challenge, figuring out what to do with her car now. So now the question is what's wrong with the car and how much it will cost to fix it. But despite all of that, Brenda says she's just grateful for all the support from the community. Live from Linda Vista, Marie Coronel, 10 News. Marie, thanks for that update. In the East County, one person was killed and a seven year old girl was hurt when a car hit a large tree that toppled onto State Route 79. It happened near Oak Grove Truck Trail northwest of Warner Springs. The CHP says there was a lot of wind in that area this morning. Around 5.45 a.m., an oak tree toppled onto the road, blocking both directions. Some cars stopped, but a driver in a Kia SUV hit the tree at full speed and it pinned the car underneath the tree. The driver was killed. The seven-year-old girl was airlifted to Rady Children's Hospital. The CHP says there was no signs the driver was impaired. Mm. Let's make, that's an Ernie's legacy, build a bridge, man. I mean that. He took his last breath helping folks. That's how loved ones want people to remember 44-year-old Ernie Buchanan. He was the Alpha Project security guard who was shot and killed right outside the bridge shelter over the weekend. The memorial in his honor is still growing, and that shelter will now be named after him. His brother, Mark Forte, says Ernie was a father of six, had four grandchildren, and was a football coach. This is the second act of gun violence that family has had to endure in the last few months. His 19-year-old son, Eric, was shot in the jaw during a drive-by outside a party in La Jolla last summer, but he did survive. When you shoot someone in your community, you have created a void for a whole family. You've changed it, man, could be some generations. The president of the Alpha Project plans to ask the city now to provide armed security. Police have not found the shooter and they haven't talked about a motive. AAA wants to make sure nobody gets behind the wheel while under the influence tonight, so they're bringing back their famous tipsy toe service. People can call AAA for a free ride home tonight or to a hotel as long as that toe is under seven miles. You don't even need to be a member of AAA to use this service. You do, however, need to specifically ask for a tipsy toe. You can find more information, including the number to call, on our website, 10news.com. Just click on the link for the red button section at the top of the home page. Well, the San Diego International Auto Show starts tomorrow, and today they're moving the cars in. 10 News anchor Mary McKenzie is live at the convention center, where, Mary, I know you are picking out cars to bring back for all of us. Hey, good morning, anchor. So we have picked out one for you, Virginia. I did not wear a color that goes with orange today, so we have found you this Rolls Royce in this beautiful dawn color. The Rolls Royce Dawn, Rolls is that right, Mr. Royce Farler? Dawn. Tell us about it. Yes, thank you for having us down here. This is a new Rolls Royce Dawn, which is uh, Rolls Royce's version of a GT Grand Touring car. Wow. You can put four people in this vehicle very comfortably. Car seats at, in the back even. At a price. You probably could put car seats, although I'm not sure that I want to. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, it's a $388,000 car, this particular variation. And in, in England, we don't call them convertibles. They're called drop heads or oh, drop like tops, it. all right? So it's a drop head coupe with the suicide doors, as you can see. It's beautiful. Hand built. It takes about nine months to build one of these. So it's like having a child. 
Right? Oh, there you go. Yeah, so. Perfect. So, Virginia, this one's for you. We also spoke to the chair of the auto show this morning to get a feel for what's new this year. This is like going to spring training for baseball, but getting there before the teams get there, right? So you know that these guys are going to be here and these guys are going to be there, but all the players aren't here yet. So that's what we're working on today is get all the players in the right places so that the cars can be the stars come tomorrow morning. All of the exotic cars are here. You can pretend to drive one or you can take a stroll down memory lane. Bring your own Griswolds to check out the Wagon Queen family truckster in beautiful metallic pea green. There's some new vehicles this year, like the Mustang all-electric SUV. And this year, the car show's gone to the dogs. If four wheels aren't your thing, four paws might do the trick. Puppies will be up for adoption if you're not taking home a new car or truck. Will in a visceral liquid, and it always remains the road All right, horse. so we are, we are showing you the car we're going to leave in. The car we arrived in, or the truck rather, is just ahead of us there. But I think we're going to take home this baby for you, Virginia. But the auto show runs tomorrow through Sunday. The tickets start at $15 for anyone 13 and up. Kids under six are free. Sunday, by the way, is family day. Anyone under the age of 12 gets in for free on Sunday. So we're going to go back inside and have a little more fun in there. For now, we're live downtown. Mary McKenzie, 10 News. Mary, you know me so well. That's exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yes. I'll look, polish look it for you mm -hmm. before Thank I bring you. it back. Can't wait. <laughs> A mountain climber rescued from Mount Hood in Oregon after falling hundreds of feet. The condition of the teen climber and exactly how he fell. A local man being honored at the Rose Parade for saving lives after losing his own. And fair but a gusty end to 2019. I am tracking the cool night tonight and the warm up by the end of the week. Now let's get your traffic with Officer Jim Betancourt. How's it looking, Jim? Not too bad out there around the county at this hour. There was an earlier crash at the 5 at 6th Street, but traffic looks to be picking up through that area. Still working on that fatality crash on the State Route 79 at Oak Grove Truck Trail. We have one-way traffic control in place, and that may be in effect for a few more hours. I'm Officer Jim Betancourt with your 10 News Time Saver Traffic. The new year is almost here, and with it, workers across California will be getting a pay raise. The state's minimum wage will jump to $13 an hour for large companies, $12 for smaller companies. This is the fourth consecutive year the minimum wage has been bumped up as California moves toward a goal of $15 an hour for all employees by 2023. 20 other states will be raising their minimum wage tomorrow as well. A treacherous rescue after a teen climber fell hundreds of feet down Mount Hood in Oregon. ABC's Matt Gutman tells us more about the fall and how crews made it to the teen in the nick of time. A miraculous rescue after 16-year-old Gerba Singh slipped on the ice near the top of Oregon's Mount Hood. He plummeted 500 feet from the area known as the Pearly Gates to another area known as the Devil's Kitchen below. It's a technical mountain. This isn't a Sunday stroll. Um, it's inherently dangerous. He shattered his leg in the fall. Singh had to be slowly and carefully brought down the treacherous slopes before being rushed to the hospital. His father says his son is an avid climber and did everything he could to stop that fall. He thought he's going to stop somewhere and he was trying to uh, arrest the fall with his ex, but it just didn't happen because he was rolling so fast. Singh was reportedly in stable condition as he was whisked into a waiting ambulance and is expected to have surgery on that leg later today. His father so grateful for his son's survival. I'm so humbled. I'm so great. All of them are heroes. I thank everybody who's been of so much help to my son. There's ABC's Matt Gutman reporting. A San Diego man you see pictured here is being honored with a floral portrait in the Rose Parade, and his family has come all the way from Italy to see it. Life Sharing provided this video for us. It shows the moment Alessandro Sparoni's parents and his sister saw this beautiful artwork. Sparoni's organs saved four strangers' lives when he died in 2013. His wife Donna created a floral portrait to honor him on the Donate Life Rose Parade float. Well, one local group is getting ready for a brisk embrace of the new year, the fun, decades-old tradition in La Jolla. A football fan's cries for help caught on camera, pleading through a ring camera for help after being shot. 
Tomorrow, dozens of San Diegans will celebrate the start of the new year with a cold one. <laughs> Not a beer, but by diving into cold water. Yeah, it's the annual polar bear plunge in La Jolla. Members of the La Jolla Cove Swim Club planning to meet tomorrow morning at 10 to splash their way right into the new year. They're going to be warming up afterwards with a potluck. So the members are being encouraged to bring in some hot foods, chili, soup. You get the idea. The club has been doing this for about 30 years now. This 10 News Pinpoint Weather Report is sponsored by Anderson Plumbing, Heating, and Air. Nobody wows clients like we do. They're brave. Oh, I'm cold just watching that. Yeah. It's quite a bit different than like the people that do it in like Minnesota or right, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Well, yeah, it's not that cold. <laughs> it's not that cold, let's just put it in perspective. But hey, we did have snow here and there's still a little bit lingering over Julian. But the wind has been the big issue here. That flag has been waving around in the wind and the winds right now. Oh, we'll get that in a second. Let's show you the temperatures because it is pretty warm outside. In fact, Oceanside, downtown and Vista all at 71 degrees, 69 in Poway. So pretty mild end to 2019 as we ring in 2020 tonight. It is going to be a, a little bit cooler and calmer. Right now, those winds up to 20 all the way to Oceanside, 40 in Descanso. And some of the strongest winds that we've seen this morning, or excuse me, over the last 24 hours have been very impressive. Sill Hill, which is located between Julian and Alpine, 73 miles per hour. Palomar Mountain and Big Black Mountain over 60 mile per hour gusts. Alpine over 50 and over 40 in Campo and in Fallbrook. So that's why the Wind advisory has been extended until 4 p.m. We'll break down those details in our next half hour. But I want you to get your midnight forecast. Temperatures will be dropping quickly as the winds start to calm tonight underneath those clear skies. Low 50s along our coast, mid to upper 40s inland and in the deserts and 30s. A brisk start to 2020 out in the mountains. So those offshore winds continue today. High pressure is going to be building for the end of the week and temperatures will be warming nicely. Not too much change in the coastline along our, uh, not too much change in the temperatures along our coastline, but temperatures will be in the 60s. Big waves coming through on Thursday. We could actually surf up to about 10 feet and elevated surf on Friday, but not as bad. Inland neighborhoods, a few 70s today, more 70s Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And for our mountain areas, we're back in the 50s tomorrow and 70s return Thursday in the Deserts. Guys, thank you so much, Megan. We want to take a moment to thank you so much for all the generous donations to our Month of a Million Meals campaign this holiday season. And we are happy to announce, take a look at the screen, we have raised enough money for more than three and a quarter million meals. And if you haven't had a chance to do it yet, you still have time to donate. Just head to any of the four Barron's Market locations you see on the screen, or you can go to 10news.com.